it's simply mind-blowing. SpaceX has managed to convert the seemingly impossible into an effortlessly routine feat. Take, for instance, the latest Falcon 9 launch mission, dedicated to deploying Irish and South Korean satellites. This send-off was a significant milestone as it marked the firm's 250th successful rocket landing, a staggering achievement that leaves any other company or agency in the dust in comparison to SpaceX's incredible track record. In a jubilant celebration, SpaceX commemorated this monumental feat with a video, showcasing the landing of Falcon 9's first stage on Landing Zone 4. This marked the completion of their 250th successful landing of a Falcon first stage booster. This particular booster, identified as B-1061, embarked on its 17th flight, having previously supported missions like Crew-1, Crew-2, and the 4th and 5th Transporter Rideshare missions. This liftoff held a special distinction. It was the first time a Falcon 9 first stage with over 15 previous flights supported a non-Starlink mission. This turning point vividly underscores SpaceX's exceptional precision and unwavering reliability in rocket technology. The adeptness and commitment of SpaceX's team have once again demonstrated the extraordinary capabilities of the Falcon 9. Not only can it deliver payloads into orbit with remarkable accuracy, but it also showcases an unparalleled ability to execute precise and controlled landings consistently. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, also lauded this accomplishment, acknowledging the SpaceX team's achievements in the 250th landing of its Falcon rocket. His acknowledgement further highlighted the significance of this landmark achievement. Considering its unrivaled flight rate, reliability, extensive reusability, and exceptional safety record, the Falcon 9 undoubtedly stands as the most groundbreaking rocket family in the annals of space exploration. Up to this point, SpaceX has achieved a total of 88 orbital launches using its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, all of which have been resounding successes. Additionally, SpaceX conducted two Starship test flights. This impressive number accounts for nearly half of the world's total flights. Approximately two-thirds of these SpaceX deployments have been dedicated to deploying satellites into space for the Starlink broadband network. However, this is just the beginning. An exponential surge in SpaceX's launches is on the horizon. Driven by the Enterprise's audacious goal of achieving 100 flights within the current year, looking ahead, if SpaceX manages to fly 12 times per month next year, which is their objective, the venture could be poised for an astounding 144 attempts in the upcoming year. But it's not just about quantity, it's all about output as well. According to Bryce Tech, a leading analytics and research firm in the space industry, the initial three quarters of the year from January 1st to September 30th witnessed the placement of over a thousand metric tons or around 2.2 million pounds of payload mass into orbit. Not surprisingly, a colossal 80% of this substantial payload mass originated from SpaceX, predominantly focused on expanding the Starlink network through multiple launches. Each launch involving a Falcon 9 carried a full load of 23 second generation Starlink satellites. This configuration represented the heaviest payload ever deployed by a single SpaceX rocket. The cumulative weight of 23 second-gen Starlinks surpassed 40,000 pounds or approximately 18.4 metric tons, highlighting the cumulative impact of these pivotal Starlink missions. In the global arena of space exploration, China secures a relatively safe second position concerning both the frequency and payload mass propelled into orbit. Bryce Tech's comprehensive data points to China's collective rocket launches accounting for just over 80 metric tons of payload during the first nine months of this year, approximately a tenth of the payload mass orbited by SpaceX. In essence, Falcon 9 has emerged as the most prolific and active broomstick in the cosmic theater of space exploration, sweeping away records and propelling humanity's journey into the cosmos. Even Amazon has entered an agreement with SpaceX to deploy an undisclosed quantity of satellites for its Project Kuiper broadband constellation using three Falcon 9 rockets starting in mid-2025. The recent contract signed by Amazon with SpaceX represents an additional enhancement to an already 
already substantial agreement worth billions of dollars. The deal aims to deploy a significant portion of the Constellation's more than 3,200 satellites using United Launch Alliance, Ariane Space, and Blue Origin. This agreement with SpaceX comes amidst prior legal action taken against Amazon's board of directors, alleging a lack of due consideration for SpaceX in favor of unproven rockets developed by the aforementioned companies. Amazon's existing deals include 8 Atlas V and 38 Vulcan rockets from ULA, 17 Ariane 6 launches from Ariane Space, and up to 27 New Glenn missions from Blue Origin, with only the Atlas V currently operational. Notably, the lawsuit raised concerns about potential personal conflicts between Amazon's Jeff Bezos, who owns Blue Origin, and SpaceX's Elon Musk, possibly influencing Amazon's choice of launch providers. Amazon refuted the claims, stating that they had no bearing on their procurement strategy for Project Kuiper. However, the urgency to deploy Project Kuiper remains paramount, with a deadline set by the Federal Communication Commission requiring the launch of 1,618 Kuiper satellites by July 30th of the year 2026, Amazon faces time constraints. Unfortunately, the primary launch vehicles for Project Kuiper are encountering delays. Ariane 6's inaugural flight was rescheduled by the European Space Agency, or ESA for short, to occur between mid-June and the end of July of 2024. Blue Origin's New Glenn is also in development with potential launches set for late 2024, including the Mars-bound Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers mission, or Escapade. Meanwhile, ULA's Vulcan rocket is the closest to completion, slated for its maiden flight in late December. However, the subsequent launches for Kuiper missions could be deferred until mid to late 2024, potentially affecting the timeline. The confluence of delays for these launch vehicles may compel ULA to navigate between Atlas V and the Vulcan flights to accommodate Kuiper missions, posing logistical challenges for Amazon's ambitious satellite deployment plans. Truly, the space industry always presents its challenges. This was demonstrated in a recent SEC filing where Astrospace secured additional short-term bridge capital to address its persistent, long-term financial concerns. On Friday, Astra disclosed in an SEC SEC filing that it obtained further bridge financing from JMCM Holdings LLC and Sherpa Ventures Fund No. 2, amounting to $3 million, which translated to $2.7 million after accounting for financing expenses. These investors had previously provided interim backing when Astra faced default on a loan and was on the verge of depletion. The initial bridge loan, originally scheduled until November 17th, was extended to November 24th first before the new financing was arranged. These measures aim to afford Astra additional time to secure more substantial investment and maintain its operational functionality. An intriguing development occurred on November 6th when Astra's founders Chris Kemp and Dr. Adam London proposed taking the business private at $1.50 per share. Surprisingly, following this news, the corporation's shares surged to approximately that value, marking a significant increase after a prolonged period below the $1 mark. There have been no recent updates from either the founders or the company regarding the status of this offer, which would necessitate raising over $60 million, an arduous task in the current financial climate. Could the saturation of the launch arena be a factor in the delay of securing sponsorship? This ongoing funding pursuit, initiated since summer, might be affected by the evolved dynamics of the rocketry realm compared to previous years. Until 2021, the sector was viewed optimistically, particularly the small set launch sector that Astra and others pursued. However, SpaceX's firm grip on the market, the challenging profit margins in small set launches, and a decline in financing opportunities have altered perceptions. Companies could be facing a critical juncture akin to a make-or-break situation. Currently, there are roughly seven firms striving to position themselves as prominent medium-to-heavy-lift launch providers alongside SpaceX and ULA. Most of these companies, except Rocket Lab and Phantom, have diverted from dedicated small-set launches, while Rocket Lab and Phantom are developing larger rockets. Astra remains committed to its vision of swift, responsive, and dedicated small-set launch services, standing apart in an industry climate where securing funding has become increasingly complex. 
This unique focus might reflect the challenging landscape faced by companies navigating the current market trends. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up and happy holidays.